Here we're gonna prove a really important result in single variable calculus called the mean value theorem. And we're gonna take a two step approach by first proving Rolle's theorem. But before we do that, I wanna recall two results that we've proven in previous videos that we will use as tools. The first one says that if F is continuous on a compact set, we'll call that compact set K, then it attains its maximum and its minimum on K. So what I mean by that is that there is some point in K where F of C is bigger than or equal to F of anything else from K and vice versa for a minimum. And then next we have the following result, which is a little bit more specific than the one that we have above. And that says that if F is differentiable on this open interval AB and it attains a maximum or a minimum at C in AB, then F prime of C is equal to zero. Okay, so let's look at the statement of Rolle's theorem, which is the first thing that we'll prove. So we wanna suppose that F is continuous on a closed interval A to B and it's differentiable on the corresponding open interval. Next, we'll show that if f of a and f of b are the same value, then there exists a c in a, b such that f prime of c is equal to zero. So the basic idea here is you've got this function that has the same value at two points a and b. So I've made that value equal to zero, but it really could be anything. We could just translate it down to the x-axis if we wanted to. Then, if you think about drawing a smooth curve through this point that I have right here and through this point that I have right here, the only possible way to do that will achieve some spot on the curve that has a horizontal tangent line. And obviously a horizontal tangent line geometrically means where the derivative is equal to zero. So that's the kind of picture that's going on here. So let's maybe erase this picture and then we'll prove this using some of these tools over here. So now that we've recalled some previous results and looked at a picture of the situation, let's go ahead and look at the proof. So the first thing that I want to notice is that the closed interval A to B is compact. In other words, it's a compact set of real numbers. And we know that because compactness in the set of real numbers actually in Rn is equivalent to a set being closed and bounded, but this thing is obviously closed and bounded. But now we know that since this closed interval is compact, F attains its maximum on this closed interval. So let's maybe write that down. So F attains a maximum and minimum on this closed interval a b so let's maybe look at a first case which would be it attains the maximum and the minimum at the endpoints so these occur at a and b but notice that if the maximum is at a and the minimum is at b or vice versa, the minimum is at A and the maximum is at B, well then that means that the maximum and the minimum are the same given that F of A equals F of B. So in other words, we've got maximum equals the minimum, but the only way for a function to have this setup where the maximum is equal to the minimum is for F to be a constant function. But if f is a constant function, then its derivative is everywhere zero. So that means f prime equals zero um, everywhere. But if it's zero everywhere, then there definitely exists some c between a and b such that f prime of c equals zero. You can just take any value of c. Okay, so that's maybe the first not so interesting case. The next case that's a little bit more interesting is that one of these occurs on the interior. So let's maybe write that down. So one of the max or min is at some C, which is an element of the open interval. So, but by this thing that we proved previously, we know that F prime of C is equal to zero. So F prime of C is equal to zero. So notice that's really all that we need to do. 
The compactness of the closed interval A to B tells us that F will attain a maximum somewhere on this compact set. Well, they could both occur at the endpoints or one of them could occur at the interior, but notice both of those possibilities bring us to the derivative being zero at least somewhere. So that means we finished this proof of Rolle's theorem. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this and then we'll look at the mean value theorem. So now that we've proved Rolle's theorem, which is really like a preparatory result, we want to look at the mean value theorem. So this is a classic result that you probably saw in a calculus one type class. So it says that if f is continuous on a closed interval a to b and differentiable on the open interval a to b, then there exists a c between a and b such that f prime evaluated at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So in other words, there is a place somewhere between A and B where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line or where the instantaneous change is equal to the average change. So I've drawn a little picture of the situation here. So say we've got this yellow curve, Y equals F of X. And then notice here, I've got a point A and a point B. This purple line is my secant line between A, F of A, and B, F of B. So that's going to clearly have slope F of B minus F of A over B minus A just by change of Y over change of X. And now notice I was able to find this red line, which is a tangent line that's parallel to the purple line. But being parallel means that the slope is, is the same but the slope of a tangent line is given by the derivative. So we've got this f prime of c. I'm calling this point c. So this is the picture of what's going on. So let's maybe get rid of this and then we'll look at the proof. So now that we've stated the mean value theorem and looked at the picture, let's go ahead and look at the proof. Maybe before I write the proof down, I want to say what the idea is. So the idea of this proof is to define a new function Maybe we'll call it d of x, such that d of a equals d of b, and d prime of c equals zero implies this formula up here, which is the result from the mean value theorem. So why do we want to do something like that? Well, if we've got a function d of x that's continuous on the closed interval a, b, and it's uh, differentiable on the open interval a, b, and it's equal on the endpoints, then by Rolle's theorem, we know that the derivative is zero somewhere in between the endpoints. But now if we've got this function is equal to zero, maybe we can carefully construct this function in a way so that when the derivative is equal to zero, that's equivalent to this thing up here. So in other words, this function is most definitely gonna depend on the original function f and maybe some other stuff. So let's maybe go ahead and get to it. So here, let's consider the following function. So like I said, I'll call it d of x and it will be equal to f of x minus f of a. So that one minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus a. So it's something like that. So now let's algebraically motivate this choice of d of x. So notice that d of x is equal to f of x, our original function, minus all of this stuff, but all of that stuff is exactly the secant line that goes through f of a and f of b. In other words, it goes through the coordinate a comma f of a and b comma f of b. Now, what I want to notice is that this function d of x satisfies everything we need, to, need it to satisfy. If we take d of a, well, what are we going to get? We're going to get f of a minus f of a here. And then we're also going to get a minus a here. So we're going to get zero. Good. And then what do we get if we take d of b? Well, notice if we take d of b, we're going to get f of b minus f of a here. And then we're going to have a b minus a here. But notice that b minus a is going to cancel the one in the denominator. 
So in fact, we'll have f of b minus f of a minus f of b minus f of a. So in other words, we'll have zero. So here we have d of a equals zero equals d of b. Furthermore, because d of x is a combination of functions that are continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, and that is this function f of x and then this linear function, which is everywhere differentiable, then that means d of x itself is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b. So maybe let's go ahead and put that down too. So also, D is continuous on closed interval A, B, and differentiable on open interval A, B. And that's because it's a sum of two functions that share that property. Okay, good. But now by Rolle's theorem, there exists some C between A and B such that D prime of C is equal to zero. But now we can just use the sum rule for derivatives to calculate d prime of c by its expansion over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So d prime of c is going to be exactly f prime of c. So that's what we get for taking the derivative of this part. Notice f of a is a constant, so we just get 0 from that. And then taking the derivative of this bit, we'll get minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Good. But we know that this is d prime of c, which is equal to 0. But now notice we can easily rearrange that so that we have f prime is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which was the goal. So in other words, we have finished our proof of the mean value theorem. And that's a good place to stop.